All right, welcome back, uh, YouTubers, DIY car guys, and car girls. I had a viewer ask, "Can you weld stainless steel V-band clamps to mild steel exhaust piping?" And the answer is, yes, you can. And it's actually pretty easy. Uh, I said if I got a thousand views, I would do it, but I only got 500, so we'll just split the difference and say that's good enough. So what we have here is what we welded last time. Uh, I have a whole video on this. I'll have the link in the description uh, about how I welded this and how I weld stainless steel piping in the description below. So go look there if you missed those videos. Now, it's very important. You know, I said I don't really use anti spatter that much doing exhaust, but when you're using this, you kind of have to. And the reason why, if you get spatter in here, in these guys right here, and you get those little balls in there, if you don't clean them up, then it won't seal correctly. So I definitely recommend that you at least use anti spatter on the inside right here where these two are going to mount up and around right here for this guy because you really don't want spatter on this. It doesn't completely prevent it, but it does help it from building up. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get to it. Okay, so I put anti-spatter everything. We'll see how good this stuff works. I said I don't really use it too much, but for this, you kind of want to. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tack on both sides. The nice thing about these V-band clamps is that they fit in there pretty snug, like so, and they give you overlap. So instead of button two ends together, when you have two ends together and there's a small gap, that's always harder. But this, you have overlap. So automatically it's gonna be easier. And these clamps are pretty thick. The material's pretty thick, so you can turn up your heat. I'll show you the settings I got right here. And that's what I'm gonna try. We're gonna try that at first, and we'll just kind of see how it goes. Let me go ahead and just uh, tack it up first then. Well, that's not a good tack, but it's good enough. And we'll just do one more right here for good measure in case one of the tacks decide to break on us. It's a little better tack. All right, so let's make a short run at first. I'm going to go from this tack to this tack right here. So that's going to be my first run. I'm not sure if I'm saying the right run, whatever you guys want to call it. I like to call it run. Because I'm running, hoping I don't screw up. So like I said in my other videos, you always want to be comfortable. You want to control it and go right down. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little more heat into the stainless right here and then come down to the mild steel. If that doesn't work, then I'll do the mild steel to the stainless, but if they want the same amount of heat, then I will adjust as I go down. Uh, I'm going to go do the C's. I kind of like doing the C's. It's got a little C right here, just kind of like this. And control the puddles. Let's try that at first. kind of lost my line there at the end but so far so good I think and I don't like going right onto the slag when I start again so I just kind of clean it up a lot of times this cheaper welder doesn't want to really uh, spark off or light off whatever you want to call it so we're gonna try that next and I'm gonna stop let's see I'm gonna stop right here I like putting two tacks in between where I'm gonna stop so I have a definite stopping point and starting point. It just kind of helps me out when I do that. So, let me go ahead and get the proper angle here. Angle with the dangle. And let's continue.
All right. Uh, let me check my wire. I kind of felt like I was doing something dumb in here. Okay, it might have had a little kink in the wire. That happens every now and then. So we're going to continue on down. It looks like these settings are working pretty darn good. Alright, so let's put another tack right here where I'm going to stop. Alright, right there. Let's clean this up. And let's hit her up. Oh, you son of a bitch. Looks like something's going on right here. I keep on losing my ground. So let me go ahead and clean this up. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. It's also important that you keep your ground nice and clean. And uh, I'm also, this is aluminized steel, so let's make sure we get a good spot in here. All right, let's try that. I'm just gonna go right down to this tack right here now. All right, either that or maybe my welder's screwing up, who knows? Or maybe I, you know what? I think I got my line kinked up too much right here. Here. Yeah, hold on, that's what's going on. I got this all twisted, so I think we're just having problems with the feed. Getting your wire feed right is very, very important. Make sure it's nice and smooth, else you're gonna have a really bad day if you don't. All right, so that's gonna be a long one, and I have to go over attack too, see if I can't do it. It always gets a little more difficult when you try to push it because you're not supposed to push flux, you're supposed to drag. When there's slag, you drag. Just remember that saying. Alright. So I'm going to stop right. Let's see where. I'm going to stop right here. That's where I'm going to stop. That well, wasn't really the best, but we'll take it. All right, we're almost there. Ah, it's moving all around. <laughs> Hopefully I wasn't blocking. I'm not sure if I was blocking that camera. Let's try again. All right, we went all the way around. Let's clean her up. Okay, so there it is. And I think for a $200 welder, doing this right here is perfectly acceptable. And you can see that stainless steel, sorry, stainless steel here, uh, this basically this non-stainless 30 wire from a $200 flux core welder. You know, I probably could have got a little bit right there is where I moved around a whole bunch. I've reposition myself, but oh well, it happens. 
but I think it is perfectly acceptable. What do you guys think? Now, one thing that's very important is you don't use too much heat because this will start the warp right here. I've never had a problem going all the way around using this welder in the settings I showed you right around there of it ever getting any, anywhere close to warping anything. If we, we turn this around, you can see these two spots marry up just perfectly. All right, so that's pretty much it. A stainless steel V-band clamp to mild steel piping using a $200 flux core welder. Yes, you can do it. Hopefully this video has been helpful and entertaining. Till next time, guys. Peace.